So this experiment is to determine the internal resistance of a, uh, of a cell. Uh, one good tip for doing experiments like this where you've got a circuit is you can just use a normal whiteboard marker to write on the table and the school desk it, it will it will wipe off quite easily when you need it to after the facts but it means when you're trying to set it up or students are trying to set it up they can put the equipment in the place on the table where the symbol is drawn. I'm using a multimeter for an ammeter because you need to measure milliamp so I've got it on the 0 to 200 milliamp setting DC ammeter which means you need one wire in the common and one wire in the milliameter setting. I've got that connected in series to a variable resistor a rear start. The one I'm using is a 16 ohm rear start. I've got a voltmeter that I put in place here but that's actually in parallel in series with the rear start. I've actually got a resistor and a battery and that is to exaggerate the effect of internal resistance. This resistor here is one of the um, it's a 15 ohm ceramic resistor, just mounted. Works quite well, 15 ohms is quite a low, but uh, that's connected in series to the cell here, and this is just a, a normal D cell alkaline 1.5 volt battery. So that's representing, obviously, the, the cell here, and the internal resistance is being represented by my ceramic resistor because obviously the internal resistance of the cell itself is very low. We will take out that resistor in a few minutes, but it will help us to understand what's going on to have it in there. Finally, you need a switch in this circuit in order to take a reading, otherwise the battery will, will run flat. So what we can do is notice, first of all, that before I connect the circuit up, the terminal PD measured across the battery, this is obviously connected between the far side of the the resistor there and, and the cell. If you look on the diagram you can see where, where the connections are for the voltmeter. Terminal PD is 1.51 where there's no load, there's no current flowing in the circuit. As soon as I allow current to flow in the circuit you can see the terminal PD is reduced. The reading on the ammeter there is in milliamps and you can see there is a little bit there of uh, fluctuation. Students sometimes find that hard to cope with but um, they need to estimate where the value is. Then what you do is you simply adjust the load resistance in the circuit on the variable resistor and take another reading and repeat the process. And then you're going to plot the current against the um, potential difference and you're going to find the gradient of that graph to work out the um, internal resistance of the, uh, of the, of the cell. Now once you've done that, you can take out of the circuit this extra resistance that we've, that we've put in there just, for, just for, um, to make it easy to see and just connect up the cell itself. And then when we connect the circuit up, you can see you still get a change of values, but they are obviously different. And you will probably notice here that um, the reading on the voltmeter doesn't change as much. But it does have an internal resistance that can be measured in this way. And then you can get a contrast, you can change the, the, the alkaline battery for something like a potato with a copper and a zinc electrode, or an apple uh, which won't work very well, or an orange that will work quite well, or a lemon. Try all different kinds of fruits, see which has the highest or lowest internal resistance, and then investigate questions uh, related related to that. So that is the um, investigation of the EMF and internal resistance of, uh, of cells.